And uh, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I felt this yesterday. I want Willie Bland and Gail. I want you guys up here really quick. You said, Brian, you done called him out. It's all right. <laughs> I'll talk to him. So I want Willie Bland. Y'all, y'all come up here. Give us the mic really quick. So we had the family fun zone. Everybody say family fun zone. Listen, it was so much more than bouncy houses. It was so much more than just saying, here's your bracelet and here's a shirt. We had more adults trying wanting a t-shirt than kids. It was crazy. And Latanya, thank you for to taking care of that situation right there. Amen. So come over here really quick. Here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to show you guys, this is a church in motion. This is a church in action. That man, everything that we do, we do it on purpose. And I'm going to tell you something. Travis and Jamie Gilpin are the bomb diggity 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 diggity. <laughs> They, they, done, they, they put that, I'm telling you, it's good. It was good. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't hear me, it was good. It was good. Travis, how many people did we reach? How much? 3,000. Unreal. This is right, this is South Central, and we don't reach it. We reached 3,000 people. You know, my, you know my concern for a lot of you? You're not, you're not in motion. You're not in action. You're sitting back wanting the blessing. But you got to put it in action. Faith without works is. Now y'all know the verse. But you got to get in motion. We had people working double shifts. And we got a church of a bunch of people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bunch of people. Everybody should have done something. I'm just saying like it. So we'll go for it before I get in trouble. Are you, are you right there? So, Willie, here's the deal. Uh, Friday night. Yeah. Friday night. There was a gentleman. I'm not going to take no time. I want you to tell the story about what happened with that man. And, and you just tell him what happened about what the Lord done through you. Okay. All right. All right. You hear me, Jim? Yeah. Okay. I probably don't need a mic, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. We were working in the, uh, what is it? Was it called? The hospitality. hospitality. Yeah. We're standing in there. And, of course, if you if you got Jesus in you, you're going to let Jesus out, right? Water so, right there. we're standing there cutting popsicles and doing all this fun stuff, giving people water, you know, blessing people that come up and tell them about Jesus, every person that comes up. And so you don't wait for people to come to you because they ain't going to. You, you got to go <laughs> be true. the church and you got to go get it, right? Because the Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffer violent and a violent takes it by force, amen? By force, yeah. So we go get them. So this young man, he was about 23, and uh, he walks up and I just, my eyes, I made contact with him and I said, all right, no, I'm going to go out there and see. So I walked out there. And I said, hey, brother, how you doing? He said, I'm doing okay. And I said, you from around here? Just, yeah. He said, no, I'm from Columbia. And I said, well, he was a well-spoken gentleman. And I said, uh, do you? You go to church anywhere around here or Columbia? And he kind of dropped his head. And he said, no, I, I, I ain't been in about six months. And I said, well, COVID kept you, whatever. And he said, yeah, I'm going to start going back with my girlfriend and all this. And I just sized him up. I said, man, are you born again? Come on. I said, are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior? So you don't ask people for Christian because everybody in the whole world thinks they're Christian. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But yeah, our God's just and holy. So I, I looked at him, asked if he's born again. He said, he said, no, sir, I'm not. And I said, would you like to be? I'll lead you right to him right now. I said, right now, you can make that decision. I said, if you walk out of here and something happens to you, you're going to split hell wide open. And he said, well, okay. And he said, let's do it. I said, right here in front of everybody. That's fine with me. And he said, well, I, I said, don't be ashamed. I drug him. I said, come here. Step back away from everybody. So he stepped back. He probably did drag him. You know he what stepped saying? back. I was getting that soul. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus deserves what he died for. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Amen. I looked him in the eye and he held me by the hand. That man was as pure. He didn't even blink. He looked me dead in my eye and I recited a prayer and I said, do you repent of your sins? Do you believe in God? Do you believe God raised Jesus from the dead and you're going to keep cleaning your slate? And you are free from your sins and you make him Lord and Savior. And you're going to live for him the rest of your life. And he said, he said that prayer with me just never missed a beat. And I said, hey, big tears come up in his eyes. And I said, now, do you believe it is the thing? Are you going to walk it out the rest of your life? And he mm. said, yes, sir, I am. I said, glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. I serve a big God. Big God. Big God. Mm. Hey. Then last night, was, <laughs> then last night, we was down there at the fireworks. We was walking around. I said, I'm going to get another one, right? <laughs> hey, hey. Welcome to church. Smith Wigglesworth said, he, his wife said he went out and he never come home. But he want a soul to the Lord. Right? So I said, I want two. Because if he can do one, I can do two. God's no respecter of person. 
I said a boy down there, he was changing the trash. I said, how you doing? He said, doing good. I said, you know Jesus, your personal Savior? And he said, looking around, he said, no, I don't. And I said, today's your day, buddy. And I said, I'm not going to force it on you. I'm not going to force it on you, but I'm thinking. I'm serious. God is serious. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to take that. And he said, well, what do I do? I've never been told anything about it. And I said, he's been... He, uh, never been Bible told. Bill. Christians walking around and won't even say what they're supposed to say to people. His buddy standing beside of him. I said, I got you too, buddy, right here. I said, we're going to get you straight. <laughs> Love it. I did. Ask my wife. He's standing there. And he said, I don't know about it. And I said, well, you better don't. If you think long, you're going to think wrong. And so I started talking to him and just, you know, just broke the ice a little bit with him and let him know that it was for real and, you know, how he could accept Jesus and how he could walk it out. And he said, I'm ready to do it. And I said, you man, I'm not pressuring you to do it. I said, but I'm telling you, I'm, I want you to do it. You need to make that choice right now. And he said, I'm ready. Right in front of everybody. I took him by the hand, led him to the Lord. And the boy beside of him said, I said, so you, you've been this? He said, I've done that. He said, I've been saved once. And I said, no, nah, once you get saved right, you don't have to get it again. I said, what you do is when you mess up is you repent and you go on about your business. And so he made a confession. He made a confession. He repented. And according to Romans 10, 9, he went, he did exactly what the word said. I stood as an ambassador of Christ and led him to the Lord. And I said, now go on your way, believe it. And I said, tell everybody. So that was two. And he said, praise God, I'm saved. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, brother. I love you, Billy Glenn. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is king. Man, listen, thank you for being a soul winner. Thank you for not letting, allowing man to dictate. I talked to a man down on the family funds. I may not be able to preach today, but it's okay. Um, I talked to a man, and he I was talking. He said, man, he said, uh, Elkhorn's a little bit different. Aren't I said, yeah, we love everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, here's the deal. I said, you see all these people? He said, yeah, I see them. I said, if every one of them said there is no God, I say there still is a God. Yeah. Amen. You got to get to a point in your life that you do not allow man, community, anybody dictate what God is doing. Listen, every word in that Bible is yes and amen. Everything is real. Whether you believe it or not, watch this. I don't care. It's real. It's real. Stay for just for a second. What would happen to you? Uh, well, Rondo and I were working the cotton candy booth. Yesterday. Cotton candy. And it's Y'all should have seen uh, Rondo. I thought he had a wig on, man. <laughs> You see, Mullet. you can see sometimes the weight that people just carry. And I don't know, the Lord's somehow given me this gift that sometimes I feel people's pain or hurt. And this lady walks up with three teenagers. So I just felt the pull, the compassion to go to her. So I stepped around and started talking to her. And come to find out, she has been to Elkhorn before. And her mm. grandchildren, her granddaughters, there was three of them. So she got to telling me, the story how she's raising her granddaughters and they have been to Elkhorn on Wednesday nights as well before and so she she said she's had custody of those girls for five years and she leads on into the story about how she got them and it just it just had to bless my heart because they were not in a good situation and I asked her I said uh, I invited her to come back to church and so she asked me the times for Sunday school and church service, and I gave her that. So, and then I asked her, I said, do you mind if I pray for you? So I, you know, I laid hand on her, I prayed for her. And Amen. she said, you know, I really needed that encouragement because she had started doubting what God had put in her path. Wow. And I told her, I said, you know, God allows things to happen, even taking family out of your path to raise your grandkids sometimes. And it just really spoke to my heart because, you know, how often do we say no to God's when he gives us somebody just to pray for? How often are we afraid, like Willie said, to step out of that comfort zone, to feel somebody's compassion? You know, just like in Joshua 1, 9, be strong and be courageous. God's always with us. And the enemy wants us to listen to the lies. Don't do it. Somebody's going to laugh at you. Let them laugh. Let, Let them laugh. Yeah, right. What have you lost? Right. What have you lost? What have you lost? That's right. Amen. 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 Thank y'all. Father God, in Jesus' name, bless these two. Give them more souls. Keep them healthy. Keep them strong. Prosper them in Jesus' name.
Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Amen. So uh, I want to, before I preach, I'm going to tell you what God, how God uh, blessed me. There was a, a family. How many of you know we're around a lot of hurting people? It's our job as the church, like Willie said, to go to them. It, you, God will use you if you just say these words. How can I pray for you? How can I pray? You ain't got to be a theologian. Just go to them. How can I pray for you? I, I see hurt on you. So anyway, um, there was a young lady. She's uh, 29 years old. She has uh, third stage cancer. She's going for her test results next week. And uh, I got the opportunity to pray for her, but uh, her mother was standing beside her. And this is where it's just crazy. I was there to pray for her, but I, I was drawn to her mother. And uh, so I didn't want to disrespect or anything like that. And I said, I'm going to pray. I said, but I looked at her mom. I said, ma'am, are you okay? And she looked at me and she said, no, sir, I'm not. And I said, what's going on? How can I pray for you? And listen, I, you say, Brian, this is not Sunday morning. No, this is a good sermon. You don't, I don't want y'all to miss this stuff. It's time to train the church on how to, how to disciple, how to witness. Because listen, you can say you're saved. Watch this. I, I would question my salvation if you never do nothing with your salvation. True. I looked at this woman. She said, uh, I said, can I pray for you? And she said, I, I would love that. I said, how can I pray for you? And I really believe this is the reason why God allowed me to come back from Florida. We left a day early to get here. I believe it's for this purpose. Um, so I, I, she said, uh, I'm just going to tell you, she said, for a year to a year and a half, I have been passing blood, straight blood through my urine. And that's okay. You say, well, that's gross. No, tell that to that woman. She got that serious. See, a lot of people try to hide their junk, but when you expose your junk, then you can do something with your junk. So she, uh, she, she said that, and I'm like, for a year and a half? You've been passing blood? And she said, yeah. And she said, I'm scared to go to the doctor. I understand. So I, I said, I want to pray for you. I said, but before I do this, I can ask you, to, are y'all believers? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? And they both said, yes, we, we, we know Jesus. We're faithful to God. We've been serving the Lord, this, that, and the other. And I said, here's the deal. Do you believe in healing? Yeah, we do. I said, because here's the deal. When I pray, it's done. I ain't going to sit there and have to pray 59,000, 109,000 times. It's done. It's done. And so I prayed. And listen to this. Y'all hang with me. I'm going to get there. I prayed for her. I looked at her. And tears were coming down her face. And God told me to do something cray cray. I was standing there. He said, y'all laugh at me all you want to. I'm telling I am done playing church. I am through. Because listen, being a good church attendance will get you first class in hell. Here's truth. Here's my God. Here's the sound of freedom. I looked at her and I said, now, I want you to do me a favor. I said, you see that building over to the little, little church? It's where Travis, y'all had the food set up. So I've done something I probably shouldn't have done, but it's okay. Um, I said, there's a restroom in there. I said, I want you to go use the restroom. And yeah, I know it's crazy. God, God, God to get y'all out of your comfort zone. And uh, I told her, I said, and when, when, when you're through, you're finished, I said, come back out and let me know if everything's good. Here's what happened. This is crazy. So we prayed over a man and uh, we, we, we bound, bound that old enemy of the blood disorder. Asked everything to line up in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We bound all that stuff. And I said, go use the bathroom and come back and tell me what's, what's up. Do you see blood? And she come out. Here's what she did there. It's crazy. She walked out. She said, yes. No blood. No blood. She said, no blood. I'm telling y'all. No blood. Wow, that's crazy. And I was going to thank you, God. See, that may not mean nothing to y'all, but to her, God healed her. That's what's wrong with the church. We don't celebrate what God is doing. We try to tell him what he's not doing. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's not, it's not about God, God bless America. It's about America now blessing God. So welcome to church. Let me preface this a little bit. What God is doing at Elkhorn is going to make some of you very uncomfortable. But I'm telling you, if the Bible's real, how many of y'all believe the Bible? Yes. Come on. If you don't, that's about right. Because he's like, if you believe the Word of God, I want you to raise your hand. Hallelujah. I'm talking to you then. God says you're going to do greater things. 
God said, I sent my son Jesus to tear down the works of the devil. God has commissioned us. God is called Elkhorn. I love all the other churches. Watch, there's 131 of them out there. But I'm telling you, God is alive in this place. And I see freedom. I see a shifting. I see a transitioning. And see, when people say they're like, oh, God, they don't went Pentecostal. No, we don't went Christian. We don't went born again. We don't follow the Bible. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. amen. So let me, let me preach this word really quick. I promise you. No, I don't. I just repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I lied. The sound of freedom. The sound of freedom. So I was out on the balcony Tuesday morning. It's my cup of coffee. Everybody knows you can start with Jesus and coffee. And uh, a jet flew over. And when the jet flew over, the first thing that came up in my spirit was that, how many of you know freedom has a sound? Freedom has a sound. And when that jet flew over, I know a lot of people said, whoa, that's nice. Look at the, look what it made, Ooh, it made a cross in the sky. I understand all that. But when I heard that jet, the first thing that up in my spirit was, that is the sound of freedom. That is the sound of freedom. There, there's a sign, and, and I want Casey to put this up, in New River, North Carolina. New River, North Carolina. And this sign, as you're coming in to the, uh, to the Marine Corps Air Station, there's a sign. And this sign, here's what, here's what it is right here. It says, New River, of course, the Mar uh, Marine Corps Air Station. It says, pardon the noise. It's the sound of freedom. Pardon the noise. It's the sound of freedom. I stopped by 3145 East Elkhorn Road to tell the devil today, pardon the noise. Because we're saved. We're born again. We're free in this house. We're, we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. We believe in the signs, wonders, and miracles. Pardon the noise. Because it's the sound of freedom. It's the sound of freedom. Freedom has a sound. Watch, watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. I love this. I'm going to fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee, but hang on. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So, 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 theologians. If God is here, that means freedom's here. If God is in this house, because we're the spirit of the Lord. I hear people quote that all the time. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Watch this. I wonder, what, what, what would Elkhorn Baptist, I'm your pastor. What if Elkhorn Baptist Church, what would she look like if we truly worship God today like we were free? What, what would she look like? What would this service look like if everybody in here was truly free? Some of you don't worship because you're more concerned what your neighbor's going to think. Some of you are you're like, oh, I, I believe in church. I just don't want to go Pentecostal. I believe in the Bible, but don't be, don't be speaking in tongues. Don't, don't prophesy. Listen, I'm trying, I'm trying to go on somewhere. What would the sound of freedom sound like here today if we were all 100% free? Galatians 5.1. Watch this. I love this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Galatians 5.1. If you're with me, say I'm with you. Come on, watch this. Galatians 5.1. I told y'all I missed y'all. I'm going to make up for it today. It is for freedom. Everybody say freedom. freedom. Everybody, say, everybody else say freedom. freedom. Now everybody else say freedom. freedom. That Christ, listen to this. It is for freedom. That Christ has set us free. It's for freedom. See, we try to put a denomination sticker on everything that happens here on earth. Let's just be the Bible. Let's just follow what God says. Let's be, let's be the 67th book of the Bible. Let's be the 29th book of the book of Acts. Watch this. Stand firm. Then do not let yourself. Watch this. Do not let yourself. Do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So if you're not free, that means you're, you've got bondage. You're, you're in slavery. Whether you say, Brian, that's old history. Well, no, 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 no. There are Christians today that are in slavery. 
There is. There's churches today all over the world. They're, they're, they come in, they sing three songs. You say, Brian, I like that kind of church. I'm just telling you, there's more to that. There's more to it. The, the definition of, 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 of freedom is the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. Y'all think about that. Not to be imprisoned or enslaved. Someone, I looked this up, someone who can move, walk, or worship without hindrance or restraints. It's the absence of anything that is hindering you. I love this. It's the absence. Are you free? Yeah, I'm free. Oh, how come you, you're hindered by this then? And I know there's all kinds of seasons. I know that we're all in a season. But watch this. Freedom is not doing what you want to do. I love this. What is freedom? Y'all ready? Freedom is doing what you were made to do. Freedom is not saying, well, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. No, no, no. True freedom is being who God created you to be. Y'all know how free I am? I am finally at a church where I'm free. I can preach free. I have no reservations today. I can speak truth over your life. Watch this. Whether you like it or not, I choose Jesus. Free, 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 free. No restraints, no restraints. You know what broke my heart last week? My youth pastor. When my youth pastor stood on this stage, I was all the way in Florida with tears coming down my face because she said these words. For two years, she allowed a man, one man, to hinder, to stop, to restrain what God was wanting to do in her life. I didn't know what was going on. I'd go to her office. I did oh, I need you to preach. So she said, Brian, can you please get somebody else to preach? I didn't know what was going on until about a month ago. About a month ago. And it broke my heart because she was here at this church. And here's what I, I, I'm telling you. I fought this because no man, no man should ever dishonor a woman of God. I'm saying, I'll preach it to y'all. I'm telling you, no man should ever look a woman in her eyes and dishonor her. She's got as much right to be on this stage as any of you do. I'm going to fight for her. I'm going to fight for Ditto in this house. Shame on that man who said that. Shame on that man who said that. I asked for his name. Because I was going to call him. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm, in, I'm intentional about this stuff. Either the stuff is real or you're dismissed. Either it's real or let's go home. But I hear a sound coming from heaven. I hear a sound like no other. I hear chains falling off this church. I know some of you are in a dry, messed up, crazy season. But I declare today, I hear a sound called freedom over your life. It is time to get up, stand up, pray up, look up. Because God, hallelujah, because God's going to take us up. I need somebody to give God praise in here today. Woo! God didn't die. Listen to me. God did not send his son, his one and only begotten son. To die on an old nasty cross for us to live in bondage. What's wrong with this world? The, ch the church is chained up. But we got people who's been Christians all their life and never led a soul to Jesus Christ. And here's what I hear all the time. Well, Brian, I'm introverted. You better get outroverted. Because I'm telling you what you got in you. Watch. If it's truly in you, it will come out of you. Yeah. <laughs> You can drink a beer, and that beer will eventually come out of you. One way or the other, I'm just telling you, God is the new wine. God is the new wine. And what God is doing in this latter end is going to be wonderful. Watch what the Bible says in John chapter 8, verse 36. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. All right, let's see, hang with me. John 8, 36. So if the Son, Jesus, sets you free, you will be free indeed. Yeah, so if the sun sets you free, you're, you're free, you're free indeed. And listen, let me, let me dedicate something over you guys. And I feel like this is, this is appropriate where I need to go. As I was studying for this Thursday, um, God wanted me to share this over you guys. So what I do, I dedicate these two little verses over your life. And I especially dedicate these two verses over, over my, my youth pastor. Watch this. Galatians 3, verse 28 and 29. This is Bible, by the way. 
This is Bible, by the way. See, I got brought up in a church, so all the women done was cook and play the piano. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If it had not been for women, over half these churches would have been closed. Thank God that women teach Sunday school. Y'all know I'm praying. It's okay. Galatians. <laughs> I knew. I knew it was coming. It's okay. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 and 29. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor slave nor free. There is neither male or female. For you all, you are all, we are all, we are all, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. If you belong to Christ, watch this, then you, it goes back thousands and thousands of generations, watch this, then you are Abraham's seed and the heirs according to his promise. You know what that sounds like? Freedom. Sounds like freedom. And here's what I've noticed <laughs> over 24 years of pastoring. Here's what I've noticed. There's always two types of people. Always two types of people in a church. Always two. Everybody say two. Yeah, the, the, the first type of people is those who say, just calm down. Be still. Be quiet. You're too loud. And then the second type of people are those who say, turn it up. Some of them say, give hell, hell. Let go and let God. Worship like you're free. Be happy in Jesus. I got the joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm the second person. Amen. I'm the second person. I know there's a time to have order in the house. I know there's a time when then you got, the Spirit of God will have a holy hush. I know there's time to be reverent, but I'm telling you there's also a time to turn it up. Oh, pardon the noise, by the way, because we were going to have Subway some freedom. Yeah, there, there's a, I'm the second type of person. And I'm sitting there going, I got a lot to shout about. Y'all look at me. If you're saved, act it. You're, you're going to heaven. Quit acting like hell. Come on, y'all. I missed y'all. Did y'all miss <laughs> Y'all all right. Because listen to me. I'm going to heaven. I am forgiven. I am born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to act like some heaven while I'm here on earth. Y'all come on now. Somebody help me. How many of y'all are born again? How many of y'all saved? That's the sound of freedom. That's the, that's the sound of freedom. And see, here's, here's what the enemy. Y'all lean in. I'm going to pray to you guys come. I, I got to stop this because if I don't, I'm going to go on. Here's, the, here's, what, here's what hell, the enemy, the devil wants to do here at Elkhorn, here in your life, and here in my life. The devil's saying, just calm down. Be still. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't make any noise. The, de the devil says, I know you're free. Just be quiet about it. Just be quiet. Shh. Don't tell nobody. It's the family fun zone. It's for the kids. Don't tell nobody about Jesus. Shh. It's okay, y'all being here. Shh. Just be quiet. Don't make no noise. If you clap your hands, you're Pentecostal. If you raise your hands, you act like you just got arrested. You did by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hey, don't do that, y'all. You're not supposed to get excited or happy about church. We want you to watch me. Watch me now. Hey, hey. That's all right. This is my sermon. You just, be, just be quiet about it. Don't get excited. Don't shout. Don't get happy. Now, you can worship, but don't sing too loud. You're going to mess your neighbor up. That's what the devil... I'm telling y'all, the devil... Wants to put a holy hush on what God is doing. I declare today, listen to me. Let's turn it up. When we go out in this world and people see Elkhorn Baptist Church coming, let them say, oh God, oh God, a mighty force has just woke up. When we wake up, let the devil look at our life and say, oh God, I got to put five devils on that person because they are a born again believer in Jesus Christ. They're set free. They act free. That's what I see in my spirit. I need somebody who's not ashamed. Uh, of Jesus Christ. You're not ashamed of the person sitting beside you. It's you say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. 
I've been worried about everybody else, how they worship, what they do. Oh, this is going on. Watch this. Every church is a stinking mess. You can leave this church and go to another church and another church. I told one person that left this church and went to another church. I said, don't join it. You'll mess it up. You say, Brian, you're me. No, I'm just telling you the truth. We're all a stinking mess. But I declare today under the unction of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I hear a sound, and a sound is freedom. And I need somebody to believe that today. You're free. You're free. People should desire. People should want what we got. They should want what we got. There's three blessings that, that need to come on the end time church. How many of you know we're the end time church? I'm almost finished. Three blessings that need to come on the end time church. Three blessings. Just three. And I'm going to fly through them really quick. We're not supposed to leave quietly. I'm going to prove it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't leave quietly. Don't leave quietly. Now listen to me. I'm going to preface this a little bit. I'm not saying get a KJV, the 1611 edition, and stuff it down their throats. Love people. Love them. Love them in the midst of their hurt. Watch. Give people room to rebound. Quit beating people. You know what I noticed in the family phones? Everybody was hurting. Even the ones that walked through there like they had it going on. You get talking to them. How can I pray for you, man? I don't even like church. And I told him, I said, I understand. I understand. I've been church hurt. I still get church hurt. But watch this. I'm not coming to church for you. And when you get to that point, there's freedom in that. When y'all are more concerned what they think about y'all's worship, who cares? Get tired of people, man. Well, they just don't like me. You don't like yourself. That's the problem, Drew. They, they look in the mirror and that person looking back at them. All you see is warts and scars and wounds. Why don't you look at yourself the way Jesus looks at you? I am the head and I am not the tail. I am blessed going in and blessed coming out. I am the righteous of God. I'm going to do something for God. God is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. We need the church to come alive. This world, watch. I can finally say this. This world needs the church. This, could y'all imagine? I got so tired of all the people. Here, we don't need no police. You let the police and the first responders get out of the way. You'll see how bad you need them. Thank God for police, good police officers. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for good government. Thank God for good people. Thank God for good churches. Thank God. Good I said it. Through the Holy Ghost. Number two, we're not supposed to leave weak. We're not supposed to leave quiet. We're not supposed to leave weak. Number three, we're not supposed to leave, leave defeated. My God. We don't leave quietly. We don't leave weak. And we, we don't leave defeated. Can I? Y'all remember when Noah built the ark? He didn't leave quietly. He made a noisy exit. Y'all remember that? See, everybody thinks that the rain just started falling. And he said, come on, family, let's go. No, no, no. I promise you, when the rain started falling, everybody who wasn't on the boat, there was a noisy exit. Can y'all, I feel, I feel this. Can you imagine the ones that didn't get on the boat? Please open that door. At least let my kids on. Amen. See, we just read the old Bible like, oh, praise God for Father Noah. No, 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 no. He made a noisy exit. Can I give y'all another one real quick? Um, where are we? Holy Ghost. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, we just read it. Boy, they turned up the heat seven times over and the Lord. Huh? And we just, we get all fired up about that. That's, that's good. But here's the greatest part about me. When they walked out, 
I can't imagine. I know they were in the fire, but they came out. Come on, come on. Here's what I know. When, when God allows something to fire to test you, you'll come out stronger. You're not defeated. You're not quiet about it. You're not weak about it. And if you was in the fire, I'm trying to prophesy over somebody's life today. You feel like you're the, you're the person that's in the fire. I declare today, could y'all imagine the noise when all four of my... I, and y'all, y'all looking at me like, no, listen. They didn't say, oh, well, blessed be the name. When, when they walked out of the fire. Come on. See, because everybody else, everybody else was bowing down to King Nail. Here, here's what God just spoke to me. God, oh, I love God so much. Because he talks. I can hear him. I don't believe he talks. So you ain't gave, gave him your ears yet. You, you need to let your ears get saved. So, Phil, I, uh, I'm trying to, okay, Holy Ghost. So, when they, everybody else was bowing, bowing down to King Nebuchadnezzar. Y'all remember this? The Bible says that they were out in the field. And everybody else was bowing down. But three little Hebrew boys. You know why they got in trouble? Because they didn't bow down to the world. Everybody else was bowing down. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, oh, no, 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 no. I, I hear the sound of freedom. I know they're getting ready to burn us. I know they're getting ready to put me in the fire. I know they're going to try to kill me. But I serve a God. I'm going to come out of the fire. I'm going to come out of the fire. I'm coming out of the fire. I, my clothes ain't even going to fail. Hey, hey, hey. My clothes ain't even going to fail. My clothes ain't even going to smell. And I know y'all look at me and say, Brian, what is going on? I come out of the fire. I'm going to heaven. Woo! Hey! Can I get it? Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Woo! Boy, it's strong up here. Drunk. Hey, come on. Jesus. Romans killed him. Jews lied on him. Put him in a borrowed tomb. Wrote a rock in front of him. Wrote a rock in front of him. Can y'all imagine? It was that early one Sunday morning. Here's what I think the greatest event about that was. Can you imagine the noisy exit? The people who went back to Where's he at? I know he died. I know they put him in a bottle too. I know they rolled a rock in front of him. But he's not here today. Can you imagine? The noisy exit. Can you imagine? Woo! Hey! Can you imagine? What people were saying. Could y'all imagine the talk of Jerusalem? <laughs> Can y'all imagine the, the talk of Jerusalem? Man, I know he died. Man, he really was the Jesus. He really was the King of Kings, hallelujah, and the Lord of Lords. So if he got up, that means he's coming back. Can I give y'all one more? I'm done. I think that's the third time, right? I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on. One more, last one. How many of y'all know the church is going to make a noisy exit? That's, that's the sound of freedom. Yes, yes. I never looked at like this, Travis. But the other day when we were talking, I seen something come up on your face that you never heard it like this. I never looked at it like this. But see, when I heard the hammer, freedom, 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 freedom. We always look at the hammer as the going part. But I serve a God. He says, you can hit me. You can put me in a borrowed tomb. But I'm coming back for my bride. I'm coming back for my church. I'm not going to leave them. I'm not going to Woo! I'm not going to do it. And y'all, by the way, let me read this to you. Woo. I know I'm everywhere. It's okay. Woo. First Thessalonians. Put this up here. How many of y'all glad you come to church today? We're almost out here. Thank y'all for being here. Facebook family, thank y'all. 
First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. This is a noisy exit. See, we're, we're just sitting there going, Well, it won't happen today. If you look at somebody and there's a pile of clothes, you're in trouble. Because you're at a church that's preached Jesus to you. I'm going to say something. Test me. If you've heard the gospel, and you're sitting here today, and you've rejected it, listen to me. We're going to do a revelation study here at this church. It's going to be awesome. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. Check me out. It says, why are you, some of you saying, why? Well, I've got time. I wouldn't chance that. I've got time. I'll just get saved after the trumpet sounds and everything's gone. Watch this. The Bible says that the Lord is going to send a strong delusion. I know you say, I've got time. But watch this. You may not, sir. Ma'am, you may not. Because you're going to believe the lie of the enemy. Yep. And watch, I'm going to say something. Because we've been in church all of our life. But this is the truth. If you have heard the gospel and you have rejected the gospel, you will not be able to be saved during the tribulation. You will not be able to be saved during the tribulation. The only ones that are going to be saved, I know this is a revelation study, but maybe to make it get here. Is the ones who have never heard it or didn't understand it. If you've understood it and you have rejected him and that horn sounds, y'all better lean in, you better listen. I'm telling you, you will not be able to be saved during those seven years. I can prove it to you. But the ones who are born again, the ones who are saved, the ones who know Jesus Christ. It's not going to be, Tommy, just a little bitty horn that's going to sound. It's going to be a trumpet of Zion. It's going to be a shofar. It's going to be a universal horn that's going to sound in the Bible speak. For the Lord himself I, will come down from heaven with a loud command. Not a little, come on, churchy, churchy. No, no, no. It's a loud command. Yeah. Go get my children. Go get my come church. On. Go get my people. Woo! With the voice of the archangel. See, we forget about the archangel. And with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ. The dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, verse 17. We who are still alive. And are left will be caught up together. With them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. And so. Will he also. Bring those who are with him and we will be with the Lord not for a hundred days not for a hundred years not for ten thousand years not for a million years we will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever somebody give him a good old praise in here today Woo! come on Woo! everybody stand to your feet Woo! The greatest song ever written is Amazing Grace. I want them to put this verse on the screen. I dedicate this over y'all. We're done. Happy Fourth. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16. Whew, my God, I speak this over y'all. Live as people who are free. Live as people who are free. That's my prayer for myself and for you here today. That we live as people who are free. Live as people who are free. I want you to turn to your neighbor. I want you to say, neighbor, my prayer for you is that you would live like you're free. Live like you're free. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I done what you told me to do. Bless your people. And God, may we worship you like we're free in this house here today. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, I am free. Everybody say, I am free. Everybody say, I am free. Now let's give God a big freedom shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Woo! Hey! I'm free.
This altar is open. And I want to see some freedom. I want to see how free y'all are. Say, Brian, I'm not coming to the altar. How come? Well, well, God's not dealing with me. Well, you missed the whole service. I'm just saying the altar is the safest place to be. I love y'all. So thankful for you. Here's what I'm going to ask you. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you know Jesus Christ as not what church you go to? That will send you to hell. Not that you've been a Southern Baptist for 50 years. That will send you to hell. There's one name. That will not send you. You get this name right. You get it in your soul. You get it in your spirit. It will send you to heaven. And that name. Is the greatest name of all. His name is Jesus Christ. So Father God, bless your people. Bless this time in Jesus' name.